Greetings, One Bowie Bahati here. One Bowie made it. Today I'm going to be talking about sewing machines. Inexpensive sewing machines versus expensive sewing machines. Is there a difference? In a word, yes. You should think of buying a sewing machine the way you would think about buying a car. You can pay a small amount of money for a car, a medium amount of money for a car, or an enormous amount for a car. But in the end, in the end, it boils down to one thing. Is the car going to do what you need your car to do? Is it going to get you from point A to point B without a lot of frustration, anxiety, and stress? And that's the way you should look at buying a sewing machine. No matter what you pay, whether you pay a little bit, a medium amount, or a whole lot, in the end it boils down to is the sewing machine going to sew and make what the things that I want it to make without giving me a lot of anxiety and stress. Now, today I'm going to tell you about where I think the best place is to buy the machine and what to look for when you buy a machine. But I'm going to start with some advice that I often hear that is given to people who are not necessarily sewers or who have never sewn before or who are looking to get their first sewing machine. This advice I hear given all the time and in my opinion it is not very good advice. I think the people who give it mean well, but it's not good advice. And that advice is if this is your first machine and you're not sure if you're going to like sewing or not, if you're not sure you're going to stick with it, then just get a very inexpensive machine to start because you might not like it and you don't want to have had to have invested a lot of money in the sewing machine. Now, I think that is very bad advice because I believe, I believe that many of the people who invest in a sewing machine but don't stick with it is because the sewing machine was not a good match to them. It was not a very so friendly sewing machine. And so the person didn't want to sew anymore and I believe had they had a machine that was more, a better match to them, that they might have stuck with it and not only stuck with it, they might have found that they really enjoyed the sewing. So a sewing machine can determine the experience that you're going to have sewing. It is a sewing machine that is not a very good match for you if you don't find it user friendly. And just like cars, we all find our match somewhere. A car that you may love, someone else may say, oh, I would never own that car. Well, the same is with sewing machines. It has to be what is working for you. Now, the best place to buy a sewing machine, I believe, is at all over the United States, and I believe I believe they're in Canada as well as the UK. These stores that are called sewing machine and, and vacuum cleaner stores, they're sewing back stores. They only sell, or the main thing they sell is sewing machines and vacuum cleaners. Now, usually at these stores, now let me also include this in those stores too, uh, because they all basically do the same thing. A craft store or a, a fabric store a quilting store, any store that has the machines out so that you can test drive them and get a feel for the machines, that's where you want to buy. You want to buy at a place where you get to test drive it and that you can actually sit, sit down and play with the machine for a little while and decide whether or not you like that machine or you change seats and go over to the next machine and try out the machines. Now, one thing I want to say about these places, the sew and back or the craft stores, fabric stores that have the machines out, is one thing that you shouldn't do is, unless they make you mad, <laughs> you shouldn't do is you shouldn't go there and try and test out their machines and then think in your head, well, I saw this machine for $50 less, so I saw this machine for $100 less somewhere else, so I'm not going to buy it here. Well, first of all, um, that's not a good idea, and I'll tell you why. These places that have the machines out for you to sew and you can test drive them, 
one of the things that they usually do, usually at these stores, and you can ask, is they have some type of workshop or classes there. And if not, it is at these type of places where they will at least give you a one-on-one -on -one to get you started using that machine. So you say, well, but I saw it down the street. I saw it online somewhere for $50 less or $100 less. And what I'm saying is that it's going to be worth it. Now you can ask them, and a lot of them may well, may well do this. You can ask them, you can say, I saw this machine somewhere, blah, 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 and it was $100 less. Do you think you can match that price? Now they may say yes, and they may say no. But even if they say no, and, and, and everything else as well, I mean, meaning that they say no, but they're still friendly people and you feel like you can communicate with them and then is go buy the machine from them because like I said they're going to be there for you you can um, always go see them or call them and say hey I bought this machine from you in other words it gives a, a face to the customer service you're not going to be if you buy something that you order online or somewhere you're not even sure where it came from you're going to be trying to call the company and you're going to be trying to say, you know, I bought this machine and it's, you're going to get even more frustrated. So if you actually can see the person that you're buying the machine from or see the store itself, a physical place, and you can go there and ask for help. And if these places are about what they say they're about, uh, and I'm sure that there are some that are better than others, it doesn't even matter if you have a, a technical question about the machine. You can also ask them if you're just having a sewing problem or issue or challenge where you can say, oh, well, you know, I'm trying to make these drapes and I can't get the hem to do this certain thing I want my hem to do. Well, you can also go to the store and talk to them about that. So paying a 50 or $100 more for a machine to buy it in person from one of these stores, like I said, the sew and back or the craft store or the fabric store where you can actually test drive the machine, it's going to be worth it in the end. If they're about what they say they're about and they're pretty friendly people, then you, you can get your machine there. And like I said, you're going to have some kind of backup and you will have a physical face and you will have a physical place to also go. And also there may come a time when you decide, you know what, I have outgrown this machine. I would like to, to step it up a bit. Well, usually it is at those places who you, they know you bought the machine from them and when you bought it. And they, most of the time will be, it's going to be easier to trade that machine in for a, 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 a machine that's a step up from where you were or a few steps up from where you were. So that's where I suggest that you buy the machine. If you cannot do that, or maybe you don't like the people that you're sewing back. So uh, but you can get them at big box stores. You can order them, uh, no HSN uh, sales machines, uh, sewing machines from time to time during, or during their craft days and things like that. And if it's a today's special or something, it's usually a, a very good price. So you want to buy the machine though, wherever you buy it from, if you buy it from a Walmart or something like that, then you want to buy it with the understanding and that everybody understands that you might return the machine and find out how long you have to play with the machine before you um, uh, can return it without any consequences. So of course that means when you buy the machine, you keep the box, but I would say for any machine, Machine that you buy always keep the box for at least 30 days until you because it may be that after the 15th or 20th day you're thinking this is great and then it's right at the 28th day that things start to go wrong and of course if you have thrown out all of your paperwork in your box and things then it's, it's going to be more difficult for you to return it if you can return it at all so those are the places where I suggest now I want to tell you one of my pet peeves about um, some of these sewing machine brands it's getting better and some of the places that used to do it don't do it anymore. Now that pet pet peeve of mine was companies that uh, sell that are not your box stores and they have uh, fancier machines or more even I'm going to say high quality machines 
and they will they would advertise the machine and you'd see these beautiful videos or read these beautiful articles about them and they wouldn't give you any price and they say for a price see the dealer and I was always thinking well if I don't even know what ballpark this is in how do I know the dealer that I'm going to talk to is not scamming me how do I know they're charging me more than I should be charged and so I don't like that I don't like when you you talk about a beautiful sewing machine you advertise it you tell all the wonderful things it can do and then you don't give any ballpark at all about how much the machine is going to cost now um bernina used to do that they don't do that anymore they the prices are right there and i love them for that um baby lock i was looking for a price for a baby lock machine the other day and they were making that they were they weren't giving up any prices it was always see the dealer see the dealer and I think pop is pretty much like that as well so I have a hard time with those places that don't want to tell you what the price is up front I know prices change all the time but you can at least give a ballpark figure I believe or at least say okay this is the date on this date this is the price of this machine so what are you looking for when you look for a machine? Okay, I will not buy a machine that does not have a self-threading needle mechanism. I find that very frustrating and just very time consuming dealing with a machine and you're trying to win every time you wanna change thread. Uh, it's not that the machine is that hard to, to thread, but you gotta get it through that needle. You gotta get it through the, the needle of the machine through that eye and uh, most of the machines today do have um, needle threaders needle threading devices on them but you gotta also keep in mind that all needle threading devices are not created equal meaning that I have dealt with machines that they call themselves having a needle threader but by the time you it was such hard work they needed you you needed to hold down this while you push this over and then pull the yarn or string around here then at the same time lift that up and then let it go and it was just so much work to use the needle threading device that I could have just spent the half hour trying to manually thread the needle. So look for a very user-friendly needle threading device. You want the machine to at least come with the basic feet for basic things. In other words, you want the machine to come with uh, the regular presser foot, you want it to come with a uh, zipper foot, you want it to come with a, um, well a lot of them don't come with the quarter inch uh, quilting foot but if you're going to do quilting then you want the, your machine to have that quarter inch uh, foot right there and um, the button attachment foot buttonhole maker foot you want those things to be basics with the machine you don't want to have to buy the machine and then go try to find because every every machine is different and a feet a foot that a, a, a zipper foot that fits one machine will not necessarily fit in the other machine. So you want to, if you can, get the basic feet that you're going to need, need to come in the package with that machine because you don't want to get home and the first thing you have to do now is try to find the zipper foot that you need for your machine. So you want to get your basic feet. So you want a needle threading device that's friendly. You want to it to come with the basic feet. It may not come with all the fancy feet for roll hem roll or old hems and things like that, but you want the basic feet to come with it for basic things. Um, and you want it to be fairly easy to thread and you want the bobbin to be fairly easy to wind and you want to, uh, to be fairly easy to engage and disengage the bobbin. And Again, what is fairly easy or friendly for one person may not be fairly easy or friendly for another person. So that's why it's important if you can to try out the machine, test drive the machine and see if it works for you. And I believe that if you're on the very, very, very low, low, low end of a machine and things are just not working out for you, then, then it might be uh, to your advantage to just you know go to the next level i'm not saying go all out but go to the next level until you get to a machine that is pretty user friendly and that is a good match 
for you. And I'm gonna say this too, you also want a machine that looks nice. Yeah, that's important. It may not seem you might, you might think, well, the most important thing is does it so? Well, that's the most important thing, but it's also important that as the person who's gonna be using the sewing machine, that you think it looks nice. You don't want a machine that you think, oh, this is an ugly machine. <laughs> but, but, and again, that's all um, depends on the person. Uh, what is beautiful to one is not beautiful to another. But you wanna have a machine that at least looks nice to you. It's gonna look nice when you put it on your table. And believe it or not, I believe that's gonna draw you to want to sew more than if you have a machine that you don't like how it looks. <laughs> but versus a machine that you like how it looks. I would also okay. say don't buy a machine because one of the selling points is that you're gonna get 60 decorative stitches. Uh, decorative stitches, you want the basic stitches, maybe an overlock stitch or a stitch uh, for stretch, when you're sewing stretch material, that kind of stuff. You want the zigzag stitch, but all of these stitches that do flowers and little bunnies in a row and little trees and apples and all these things, um, you're not, I haven't found anyone that really uses all those stitches that much. If you are somebody that really wants to decorate something and you're into decorating and you want to put designs on things, then you're probably in the market. What you should be looking for is a machine that also does embroidery, a sewing machine slash embroidery machine. And you can get those at very reasonable prices. They do start at very reasonable prices. The Bernina that I just saw that is, oh my God, it's $22,000 and it just does, uh, it does sewing, quilting, embroidery. It looked really, really, really amazing. Uh, but decorative stitches is something, it shouldn't be that you're gonna pay more because you're gonna get the decorative stitches. The main thing you wanna pay for is your basic stitches. And also when you take it out of the box, you shouldn't have to fuss with it. If you take it out of the box and right away, you gotta play with the tension and you gotta try to figure how to make this the stitches smooth, put it back in the box right then and take it back. That's not the machine oh for you. Yeah, My most expensive machine that I ever bought was $4,000, it was a FOF. The least expensive machine that I have ever bought was a brother machine at $200. And believe it or not, my go-to machine today is that $200 brother machine. So when you're in the market for a machine, the most important thing to keep in mind is whether you and that machine are a good match. And that's going to make the difference in whether or not you enjoy sewing or you don't. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. What's the most you've ever paid? Or what's the most you're willing to pay for a sewing machine?